If you ask anyone who's seen Lawrence Walk on television what they remember most, you're sure to get a variety of answers. But for those who knew and worked for Lawrence Walk, the memories are a bit more vivid. Tonight, in the second and final part of our series, you'll meet and hear from those who became a part of the Lawrence Welk family and television history. Goodbye, my cousin. The Lennon sisters are a part of that history. They auditioned for Lawrence Welk at his home. And as we walked through the gates and opened the door, Mrs. Welk was there. And uh, Mr. Mr. Welk came out, and it, he indeed was sick. He had on a maroon satin smoking jacket and velvet slippers, and he was like out of a movie somewhere. And he came, sat down on the couch, looked at us, and said, sing, just like that. And it was like, so we went over, hit the piano on the, you know, key on the piano. And we sang, he can turn the tide and calm the angry sea, which was popular by the McGuire sisters. And uh, he said, wow, my son was right. Would you be on my Christmas show? Would rock me in the cradle. And that was Christmas Eve, 1955. And we were on every Saturday night after that for 13 years. Bobby Burgess, one of the original Mouseketeers, would join the Lawrence Welk show as a dancer in 1961. Burgess would have three dance partners throughout his years on the show. Barbara Boylan, Sissy King, and Elaine Baldwin. And they were all great in their own way, and they all specialized in certain things. And when they came to my, me as a partner, they helped me grow because I would teach them my things, and then they would bring in their new steps and all. So we created new things each time. And now, after years of dancing into hearts, Burgess says he's finally able to sit back and enjoy his work. I just love to watch the show now because I was so focused on my dance routines that I never really got to sit down and enjoy it. Now, I, I, I turn on the, the reruns and uh, enjoy Norma Zimmer or Guy and Rolna. If I were a carpenter. Burgess is referring to the first then husband and wife duo to perform on the show. At first, it was only Rolna, but not for long. I went to everybody. I went to the musical director, George Cates. No, we don't have husbands and wives. Only the children on the Christmas show. No husbands and wives. So I came home dejected, and I, I told Guy, and I said, you know what? Let's go down tomorrow. We're going to be doing the show, recording it on, on Tuesday. And during the day, and, and you bring your guitar, and let's sing Little Toy Trains for Lawrence. It was the ultimate Christmas gift for the couple. English says after the Christmas show performance, they received more fan mail than Lawrence Welk himself. We were on the show together then. For I was on for 13. We were on for 12 together. Another singer put on the spot was Mary Lou Metzger. At the time, she was performing in Arthur Godfrey's All-American College Show. And he handed me a microphone and said, sing something. So with no accompaniment or anything, I sang How Are Things in Glockamora, which was the song I was doing on the college show that week. And after the show, he invited me back to his dressing room. And I was sure I was going to get um, an autographed picture to take home to my parents. I thought that would thrill them. And instead, he invited me down to the Palladium to sing with the band that Saturday night. And uh, my mom flew out for that one. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mary Lou Metzger. Welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. The Mary Lou and other former Welk stars can now be seen introducing shows from years ago. And although a new show hasn't been taped since 1982, there's a reason why those I spoke with say Lawrence Welk and his show still are popular to this day. It was all beautiful music, beautiful sets, beautiful costumes. And if you didn't like something, wait a second, maybe you'll like this. It was like entertainment. We still have something to maybe make people feel happy for a while. He knew what, what his audience liked. That's why he was so successful and he played to that strength. I think it brings back that sense of what we're all longing for and what we can create if we make that choice. I can't think of a, a person that was more humble and more compassionate than he was. Compassionate, humble, a talented musician, and North Dakota native, all words personified in Lawrence Welk, whose wish can still be heard to this day. Now, to all you folks, keep a song in your heart. See you next week. I'll be the same. Good night. 
Lawrence Welk left us in May 1992, but he and all of your favorite Lawrence Welk show stars are still seen and heard on television stations all over the country. For example, he could be seen here locally on Prairie Public. In addition to the people you've heard from, I need to thank Mr. Larry Welk, Margaret Heron Letterman, Susie Dowdy, Bob Allen, Jeff Morava, Ann Lowe's, Troy Davis, Michael Miller, and our friends at Nexstar affiliate KTLA. I hope this story brought back a pleasant memory or two and a smile to your face.